Danny, this is Torin, and we're turning this lifeboat into a liveaboard. In today's episode, we continue a few projects, including taking out the foam, as you can see. I do some sanding because what would an episode be without some sanding? And Torin starts to work on the stern tube. In addition, we are finally ready to rebuild those side windows and walls that we messed up so spectacularly a few episodes ago. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and check it out in episode four, we made a huge mistake. What Torn's doing here is removing foam. So this is the hard expanded foam, which is everywhere in Luya. All the, cavity, all the cavities, the floor, under the seats, everywhere is this foam stuff really hard to get rid of. We've tried various things, cutting it out, using a crowbar, and here Torin's using one of the messier but more effective methods we found, which was a two inch drill bit to grind it up and then a shop vac to pull it out of the boat. Frustrating, but ultimately effective. Speaking of frustrating, but ultimately effective, here I am doing yet more sanding. The reason we had to sand so much on the bottom, even though it generally looked okay, was because these boats were never meant to spend a long time in salt water, so they hadn't been protected at all. Once we sanded this back enough that it was gritty or grippy enough for some paint to stick, then, and you'll see this later, we were able to use uh, four coats of Interlux Interprotect, which helps stop us from getting blisters. And then on top of that, we put in a blade of bottom paint. And so being a blade of means that as you go, it slowly sloughs off your boat. And it helps to protect from tons of little beasties attaching themselves to your hull, which slows you down and isn't great for your boat either. One of the other issues that came from having the bottom of the boat not be protected was that when we hauled out, a lot of the metal underneath was quite rusted. Some of it we were able to rejuvenate and use again, and you'll see that in future episodes. But the stern tube was one thing which Torin didn't feel was usable. He talked to a marine architect, and they said that as long as we protected it with a zinc, we could use a stainless steel tube. And so Torin went to work, and here these are clips of the machines that he runs at his job, obviously making a different part, but you get an idea. Anyway, he went to work and he made a brand new st uh, stainless steel stern tube for us to use in Luya. In a second, you'll see a photo of the actual stern tube in production, and then back on the boat, it was time to measure and dry fit to make sure everything went together where it was supposed to. What are you working on? Um, I'm looking at making a plate for mounting the stern tube. Is that something in there? Yeah. What's going on here? We're testing to see whether the stern tube's gonna fit. And we're gonna probably glue in the uh, insert today. Different types of metals don't always play well together. So that fiberglass tube inside the stern tube is to make sure that the prop shaft, which will go through all of that, doesn't corrode the metal and vice versa. Well, the stern tube's an inside thing? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it stuck out. It does stick out <laughs> from the inside out. <laughs> All right, well, I guess I'll wait here for it to appear. This was only step one of the undercarriage, let's call it. Once the metal on the rudder and the propeller are cleaned and protected and the bottom of the boat is painted, everything will get reassembled. But it was really nice to see progress here and so handy that Torin is a machinist so that when we needed a huge chunk of stainless machined into a perfect cylinder, he was just able to do that for us. None of this is permanent yet, but over the coming months, it will become so. So what attaches to this? The uh, propeller shaft goes through here, and then the propeller's right here. Ah. 
And while that project ticked along happily, it was time to start a new one. Or, in reality, to restart. If you saw our episode, Have We Made a Huge Mistake?, you'll know that we did, in fact, make a pretty huge mistake. And that was in the way that we tried to construct these side walls. They're filling in the big gap where, in an emergency, people would load in and out very quickly. But of course, we don't want huge holes like that in our boat, and so we're building part windows and part walls. We started with the walls, and just as well we did, because there were several things we needed to redo. We weren't happy with how it looked, or the strength, or the materials that we'd used. The polyester resin was really problematic, we hadn't shaped it well, and overall, we just didn't think it was going to work. And so, after cutting it all out of the boat like you just saw Torin do, it was time to start recutting new wood for a second effort. We're using fir for the building, which is a nice solid hardwood. Uh, I think Torin likes it because it's got a dense grain, which apparently makes it strong. And strong is what we want here. We've taken out the metal support, what was yellow, and we did that for a few reasons, partly because it's just really hard to build around a cylinder of metal. But because we did that, of course, we need to replace the strength. And one of the ways we did that was by using nice big pieces of wood, like this two by 12 that Torin's cutting here. You can see him cutting it to length. Getting it up here was just as awkward as you might imagine, but we did it and we were excited to rebuild what we had originally kind of messed up. Once it was roughly cut to length, we needed to use a jigsaw to round the corner. The bottom of the windowsill is not even remotely, I mean, it's not trying to be straight or square, which is fine. And so here we're putting in a nice radius so that it would sit in better when it was time to install. Once we had it cut to roughly the correct size and length and we had rounded those corners, it was time to produce what I'm calling the bolt holes. Since it's completely impractical to bolt all the way through the length or height or width or I don't know what the official word is, I'm sure somebody will say it in the comments, but anyway, since we can't bolt from top to bottom, we needed to cut little access holes so that we'd be able to bolt from lower down in the wood into the orange um, that you can see just behind the jigsaw there. So after drilling a couple of pilot holes, then Torin cut it out with a jigsaw and we were ready to go. I should also mention that Torin knows all these words and exactly what's going on, but he's never here while I'm editing, so all of the mistakes in these videos are mine and usually mine alone. Next up, we measured the fiberglass and marked out where the bolts were going to go so that we could pre-drill them and have everything line up easily. And then here, Torin is pre-drilling into the fiberglass so that once we sicka flexed it and got it ready to attach, hopefully the bolts would line up as they came through the wood and then through the fiberglass. Unfortunately, I don't have any film of this next part, but after the wood was ready to go, we sanded the fiberglass frame, used a layer of Sikaflex for extra strength, and then I held the wood in place while Torin put the bolts through both pre-drilled holes and then used that bolt hole that I talked about earlier as a space to secure it all together. Once the first layer of wood was in, we needed to start building the window frames. And so they couldn't be just solid panels, of course, because we needed room for glass. So that meant we had to have several different kind of layers of wood going up the boat. I think that will become more clear in a minute. In order to attach those all together, we use this nifty tool, which is called a Craig. Um, it's kind of a jig, so you attach it to the wood, you can see Torin waving it around, I think he's explaining it to me. But you drill in and the drill has to follow the shape of the craig, so it creates a pre-drilled hole that's kind of a diagonal into the wood, so you get a nice angle. And then you use their special very, very long drill bit and their screws to drill thing, attach things together in a more vertical fashion. If you look carefully at that vertical 2x4, you can see the holes where the screws have gone in top to bottom, and of course the second layer of wood. 
Once that was installed, we then screwed in from the sides just to add a little bit of extra strength. And we've also got Sikaflex going on here too. So between the screws top to bottom, side to side, the Sikaflex, and then later the fiberglass, the walls, and the windows, everything should be pretty stable and sturdy. And it is, I can tell you, a heck of a lot stronger than that first failed effort. And then it was just a question of building the rest of the framing and of course doing it on the other side as well. You can see here a few layers of wood have been built up and hopefully with this slightly disorganized footage get the idea of what Torin's doing here. Basically everything's screwed together, Sikaflex screwed into itself, screwed into the boat and is really quite solid. We ended up adding a vertical piece of wood to replace that yellow metal post and so you'll probably see that a little bit later. I don't know that I've got video of us installing it but those vertical pieces really helped make everything nice and strong as well. We made good use of the Craig system attaching all these things together and I have to say this whole system is so much stronger than our first uh, attempt at assembling these windows and walls. Once the frames were basically together, Torin did a little bit of housekeeping, like here he's angle grinding the extra ends off some of the bolts, and then we were ready to put some plywood up and really see the walls take shape. Torin started attaching it by putting on a layer of Sikaflex, which just kind of helps get that initial bond, but it stays flexible, which is really nice and then he screwed on the Baltic birch. We chose Baltic birch partly because we've used it a lot before, we like it, but also because it's quite bendable when it's thin. And so you'll see in a second that he's actually able to bend the wood around the curve, giving it a much nicer shape to the boat. That worked out so much better than the last thing we tried, which you guys will remember was sort of using zap straps to tie bits of wood together and then try and make the curve work with the plywood and that was all a disaster. So I hope you agree that this is going much better. I'll show you most of the install on this side and then you'll just have to imagine the other side. Of course it went very similarly but I didn't see any need to bore you with that whole situation twice over. So the last part of this project I'm going to touch on today is fiberglassing the back half which will become the walls. You guys remember last time that we tried to use that horrible fiberglass that we really didn't like. I think it's like biaxial chop strand or something. Again, my mistake, not Torrens. Uh, but the big problem also is the polyester resin. It kicked so fast. It was really, really lumpy and kind of gelatinous. And also you could feel your brain cells die when you used it, even using a respirator. We switched to West Systems two-part epoxy and it's so much easier to use. It is basically no odor. It's really easy to mix and it just works every time. I mean, I think we've had one small issue out of dozens and dozens and dozens of times of using this product now um, and we're very much a fan. Luckily, this time every part of the fiberglassing process went so much better. You can see here Torn's got at least one layer of glass on here and as he's using the roller to push the epoxy through the glass, you can just see how much smoother it is, how there's no big bubbles, and how it's not a big brown mess. We're so much happier with this method and 
it was pretty successful. Don't take a picture of that part. I'm not sure what Torin didn't want you to see, probably just that it was a little bit messy. But here he's filleting in the bottom of the walls, so the area between the wall and the boat, which is kind of a 90 degree angle thus far. He's using thickened epoxy and this tongue depressor to just kind of ease that angle into a little bit of a curve. It's stronger, it helps with waterproofing, it looks better, and it's something that we're doing a lot around the boat just to make sure that everything looks nice and smooth and professional. However, for today, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, for checking back in on these windows and walls. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, and if you want to see what happens next, don't forget to subscribe, click that like button, and if you want to be notified when we post a new video, if you hit that little bell icon, you will get those notifications. In the meantime, thank you so much for supporting us on YouTube, over on Patreon, and for all of your comments and questions. We really love hearing what you have to say. Have a great day, and we'll be back in a couple of weeks. Bye!